and Ferret. <laughs> Hello, Kate from Ferret Tube TV here. It's my very great pleasure to introduce today's book launch. And it is by Barbara Lorna Hudson. The book title is Do You Remember the Barn Owl? Uh, it's a short story anthology. And some ferret related blurb for you. Uh, Do You Remember the Barn Owl by Barbara Lorna Hudson is a diverse selection of stories. This anthology, much like the life of a ferret mama, leaps, uh, leaps from drama to delight, from horror to surprise, a roller coaster of well traveled by those with furry charges to look after. Um, couldn't be more accurate. This is love, but any moment could turn into intense pain. <laughs> I hope you enjoyed today's book launch. Yes. Please don't hurt me. Barbara Hudson. Do you remember the barn owl? Barbara is one of several authors who originally approached us after we were featured in the magazine Myslexia. She was already an experienced author when she came to us with her novel Makeover that we published in 2019. As well as being a novelist, Barbara is a prolific story writer short stories particularly, she approached us to explore the possibility of publishing an anthology of her short stories. We asked for a sample and took a look. I was very happy to publish them because they were so good. Many of them have been published before, some of them have won prizes. These are the sort of stories that should be collected together so they don't get lost. And just a word to any aspiring authors who are watching, Barbara's work always arrives with us in pristine condition, well edited, spell checked, coherent, it doesn't have spurious blank pages, it doesn't arrive with an array of different fonts and sizes, and if we ask for a specific sample in a specific format, that's what she provides. A professionally presented submission means you've done your homework, you're a professional. The work itself still needs to be good enough that we'll take it, obviously, but I have turned work down that is awash with errors, even though it looks very promising. It does make a difference. Writers can learn a lot from people like Barbara Hudson. The Burning Bush The Burning Bush, Vulture Press An amateurish jacket covered completely with garish orange flames licking at a small fuzzy triangular object. It was not exactly clear, but the bookseller was sure this was a work of sadopornography. Pink with embarrassment. We don't sell this sort of thing, she told the author a miserable-looking man with a peculiar moustache. I believe this genre is only bought online, or maybe in that private shop, not that I've ever been in there. Oh, my goodness! Whatever did you think it was about? My dear young lady, this is an historical novel. Have you never heard of Moses' encounter on Mount Horeb? He pulled aside his scarf to reveal a dog collar. The bookseller felt ashamed of her dirty mind. But she replied, would you come back when the bookshop manager is in? She decides about taking books direct from authors. The manager glanced at the book. Vulture Press never heard of them. It would be better if you got one of the big five publishers. Who knew, muttered the author sarcastically. I beg your pardon? Oh, nothing. He marched out of the shop. A week later, he was back. The manager recognised him by his peculiar moustache. This time he sounded humbler. Please, could you reconsider stocking my novel? It has ten Amazon reviews now. I could do an event or a signing. He cast an envious glance at a celebrity author who was signing books for a queue of excited fans. We don't take self-published. It isn't self-published, it's from Vulture Press. Well, it looks self-published, obviously print on demand. He shuffled out, looking stricken. But after another week, there he was again. The manager sighed. He was wearing down her resistance. Oh, I'll give it a week, she said. Sail or return. If we haven't sold it by the weekend, you'll have to take it away. Come back next Monday morning. She placed the burning bush in a dark corner where its lurid jacket was scarcely visible. On Saturday night, the shop, with all its books, went up in flames. 
arson was suspected, there were signs of a break-in and the police received reports of a person, gender uncertain, hurrying down the alley near the shop. The person wore a hoodie with just a white face showing and there were no distinguishing features. He or she was carrying what might have been a book or might have been a handbag. In sheltered accommodation for retired clergy some miles away, an author without a moustache smiled triumphantly as he watched the local news. Sitting by a cardboard box full of author's discount copies, with one slightly charred volume clutched lovingly to his bosom, he decided he'd lie low for a few weeks. Then he'd look for a bookshop with a more discriminating manager. This is the beginning of my short story, Do You Remember the Barn Owl? A scream, a silence, and then a squeal. As she waits in the lane, the child shudders, though she knows these are just the familiar night sounds of fields and woods around her home. Patient, she tells herself, be patient. Soon the bird will come. With not the faintest whisper of wings, it will fly along the fence beside the field. The barn owl, the silent hunter. The owl is white below, but its feathers are buff brown above. Yet it looks pure white, ghostly white. The heart-shaped face is beautiful and cruel. The roost is in a ruined farmhouse beyond the wheat field. Built and abandoned in the 17th century, this was home to a couple with children, but no further descendants. The house stands among trees, and when the wind stirs the branches and the moon shines overhead, you can sometimes see shadows move inside and imagine pale faces at the empty windows. A local historian says the family was probably wiped out by the Great Plague, though how the plague reached this isolated spot is hard to guess. Others in the village claim the house was the scene of multiple murder and suicide. But there are no records to confirm either account. They probably just moved away, said the girl's father when she asked about these stories. Anyway, we don't believe in ghosts, her mother added quickly. Which made her uneasy. She had not thought of ghosts till then. Since that conversation, she has kept away from the old farmhouse and after sunset, she tries not to look in that direction. She is nervous of the dark. On winter evenings, she hurries home from the bus stop, trying to ignore the country noises that make her tremble, though she knows them well. Beneath the hedgerow, small rodents rustle among the weeds and birds tweet sleepily in the bushes. Pigeons, startled by her footsteps, rise up in a great clatter of wings. From the woods come the hoot of tawny owls, the bark of foxes and deer, and sometimes the piteous squeal of a doomed rabbit. Once she heard badgers fighting, a sickening cacophony of yelps and growls. Even when she's safe and cosy in her bed, with a little cat-shaped nightlight glowing on the dresser and her parents in the room below, these sounds make her shiver. Yet on some nights, the lonely little girl conquers her fear and comes out to see the barn owl.
Joining us on the line now from the UK is Barbara Lorna Hudson, who is a retired Oxford Don and former psychiatric social worker. She brings personal experience to bear in a hard-hitting social comedy called Makeover. Welcome to the book show, Barbara. Thank you for having me. Pleasure. Thanks very much for joining us. Uh, This isn't your first book, is it? No, it's not. I produced my first book. It came out two years ago, and it was about my own experience doing internet dating. (laughs) And it was called Timed Out. Fantastic. And when were you doing internet dating? The moment I retired from my academic job... I wondered what the hell to do with the rest of my life, basically. (laughs) I'm divorced, and I'd been working very, very hard. But now there was room in my life, I thought, for something else. And um, I did try internet dating and met a lot of nice people, but I'm sorry to say that I'm still single. Oh, so it didn't work for you? Um, It partly worked. I did meet some, as I say, nice people and at least one or two really nice relationships. But um, they're over, I'm afraid. And um, I've really found writing has given my life a bit of meaning and I've so much enjoyed becoming a fiction writer. Oh, good. So how did it differ writing fiction compared to writing about your, your own life? Oh, sorry. Well, I didn't make that clear. My first novel is a novel, and I fictionalised it considerably, gave it a completely different ending and a slightly different heroine from me, disguised myself. Um, So it was a novel, timed out. Um, But fiction writing differs a great deal from my earlier writing as an academic, when I wrote textbooks and academic papers on mainly psychology, psychiatry, and social work. Uh, I think fiction is much harder, actually. Really? Uh, it, the thing is, in those other fields, you know what you're doing, but in fiction, you have to make it up, and it, it, it is quite hard work making things up, I think. <laughs> and, you know, then finding a publisher is terribly hard, and then promoting the book... Oh, my God, that's worst of all. (laughs) (laughs) So there's a lot to think about. It's not as simple as just writing a book, is it? No, it certainly is not. But it is, I mean, I love it. Once I get going, I can write all night just for the sheer joy of it. Oh, that's nice. But it's the next morning when I think, what am I going to do with this stuff? That's when things get tough. Yes. And do you you plan a lot before you start writing? (laughs) Not really. I mean, I wait for an idea. Um, I've written quite a lot of short stories, and it's amazing where they come from. And this particular novel, Makeover, it actually evolved. First of all, when I was doing internet dating, I did something I'm not very proud of, really. I googled the late, the deceased wife of somebody I'd met online. He told me she was a writer, and I was interested. So I looked her up on Google, and I'm sorry to say that I was delighted to see that she was fatter than me. (laughs) (laughs) And then I wrote a short story called Googling the Wife (laughs) about a very nasty woman trying to get her hooks into a rich man. Who And this is a woman who Googles the wife and then tries to be more like the wife. And I published that short story. And one of my neighbours, in fact, said, it's a good story, but I didn't believe in the woman. What would make someone behave like that? So I thought, I ought to expand it. I ought to make this woman more believable. Mm. And it grew and it grew. And it became this novel, Makeover. Oh, fantastic. So tell us about the, some of the characters in Makeover. Well, the, there's a main woman and a main man, and it's from both their points of view. Uh, the woman is called Lucille. Uh, at least she calls herself Lucille. She was actually christened Mary. 
but she wanted to sound a bit more attractive. <laughs> um, she comes from a, an abusive home where her father knocked her mother about and hit her a lot too and killed their dog. A really sad background. Mm. And uh, then she's been married twice, both times to a violent man. And she's a personal shopper. So she, she um, you know, advises people on outfits to buy in, in a big department store mm. in Oxford. Um, and she's looking now for security. She would like a, a man who doesn't knock her around, uh, who's kind to her, but she's not looking so much for love as for money and security and a home and all the rest of it because she's had such a tough life. Mm. So that's the woman. The man is an Oxford history professor, widowed, still grieving for his wife. And he's lonely. His children are away at university. And he would like a little bit of sex and a little bit of companionship. And I cunningly arrange for them to meet. <laughs> <laughs> so I don't want to say any more than that, but they have... Quite a lot of things happen to both of them that change them both radically. Right. Oh, it sounds like fun then. I did, yes. Though some of it is quite serious because there's quite a bit of domestic violence in it mm. and uh, some sad things happening. That's partly, I think, why I had trouble finding a publisher for it because it is a mixture of light and dark, really. Unlike the first novel, it, it didn't make me cry. Over the first novel, I cried, feeling sorry for me and for my heroine. This one, I'm a little bit more distanced from it, I suppose. OK. Has that made it easier, then, would you say, than the first one? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. And why Makeover? Can you tell us about the title? Um, it's, oh, it's a cunning title. <laughs> it, it refers... To the obvious thing of making yourself look different and the heroine does that twice okay. trying to change her appearance and having a makeover with you know lipstick and clothes and all the rest of it but it's also about the awful things that happen to these two people change the people and they have makeovers. Okay. And there's also a building that gets a makeover. It's a deaf and hard and hearing centre, <laughs> which is turned into a women's refuge. <laughs> so there are several makeovers going on. Yes, clever. And I have to ask, I hope you don't mind, can, I, can we tell the listeners your age? Because I'm very impressed. <laughs> well, you shouldn't be impressed because all I've done is just lived. <laughs> into my 80th year. Oh, no, but that's amazing. You're writing a book and everything. That's fantastic. We can all uh, dream of, of doing that ourselves. Well, I recommend it as a way of feeling alive, actually, and yeah. keeping going. And it's lovely to have projects and parties. Yeah. As I've been having, I'm in my sitting room now, and I've got four bunches of flowers and lots and lots of cards, and I've had two lovely launches. So it's, uh, you know, and uh, I've just, just been opening some fan mail already because a few people have read it now. Uh, it makes me very happy. Oh, that's fantastic. Congratulations. Good for you. Thank you. And uh, any plans for another book, do you think? Are you, are you well on the way now? Um, well, I've got a short couple of short stories I'm fiddling with at the moment uh, but I've also got a novel in bits with some excellent characters but no plot Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so I don't know what's going to come of that it hasn't got a title yet um, it's I'm trying I love trying to write from different points of view from different getting into the heads of different people and this time I'm writing I'm trying to write from the point of view of a of a, a mother who lives through her children and is pretty well ignored by the family. And just, you know, I think a lot of mothers of that, the generation of my mother, did live through their children, really. But I haven't got far enough to, t to tell you much more. <laughs> it's, it's a struggle, this one. Yes. Oh, it sounds like a good idea, though. Good luck with that. 
Thank you. In the meantime, if people want to get a copy of your latest book, it's available to buy on our website in the TRE Bookshop section. It's called Makeover and it's by Barbara Lorna Hudson, who we've been chatting to. Barbara, thank you so much for joining us and good luck with the book. Thank you very much, Hannah. Do You Remember the Barn Owl? by Barbara Lorna Hudson. Barbara Hudson's a prolific writer of short fiction, but I've only previously read her novels, probably because this is the first time her short fiction's been collected together. In this anthology, we get all the characters I would expect to meet from having read her novels, and a few more, ghosts even, indeed creatures of all kinds. One of the things that struck me was the way she can spring surprises in her storytelling. I recall it from the novels and it's here in in this small short format as well. What starts off on an apparently gentle route can suddenly become anything but. She's a very clever writer. Her writing's nuanced, it has depth. It's hard to pick a favourite story because there's such a wide range of themes, humour to horror if you like, But it was the eponymous Barn Owl story that stuck with me. Barbara Hudson's an award-winning author, and it's good to see her short fiction put together like this. If you like intelligently written prose and a good story, you'll enjoy this book. That's Do You Remember the Barn Owl by Barbara Lorna Hudson. It's a great read.